Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my February 8th, 2019 Friday Reads. My first Friday Reads of the year since I didn't do any in January, but I'm excited to get back into this tradition and to talk briefly about the books that I'm reading. <laughs> Unlike my monthly wrap-ups, like the video I just did, which uh, went on forever and ever. <laughs> I'll try not to do that, so that means I'll just uh, get off this intro now and get into it. <laughs> So for the last several days, I've been reading my first official read of February, and it is The Invention of Wings by Sue Monk Kidd. It's been on my uh, Goodreads TBR forever, and its number finally came up. Uh, perhaps it feels a little apropos to start uh, Black History Month with. Uh, the That is Black History Month in the Americas, and this is particularly about a horrible cornerstone of American history. Uh, it deals with slavery in the antebellum South, and this is uh, at the first few uh, decades of the uh, 19th century in Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, we are following uh, two young girls to women uh, throughout their formative, formative -tive years. <laughs> uh, there's Sarah Grimke, who was an actual abolitionist uh, at the time, and then uh, her slave, her personal slave, uh, Hetty, who who um, kid uh, renames as Handful. Uh, uh, she was an actual person as well, but I think a lot less was known about her life, so Kid uh, fabricates a lot more for her. And I think it's a good novel. I mean, it's a it's a gripping story. Um, kid uh, imagines uh, how uh, Sarah Grimke might have um, formulated her. Uh, abolitionist beliefs and also her beliefs in, uh, you know, education for, for women, particularly because uh, both in the book and apparently in real life, uh, she was very smart and even her father commented on, you know, if only she were a boy, it maybe could have <laughs> gone to be the most successful of his children. Uh, and um, Handful is, uh, you know, suffering horrible things and just trying to uh, have a sense of identity and a sense of family. Uh, and uh, it's an interesting uh, relationship between these two girls and whether or not we can call them friends, really, given the uh, injustice that's inherent in their relationship. Obviously, this book is uh, pretty triggering for the abuses that Handful suffers and uh, also the black people around her suffer. Uh, but I think Kid tells things in uh, a less uh, direct and brutal way, so it could be more approachable in that way. This has sort of the feel of... Uh, I almost want to say chiclet, but I feel like that's pejorative, but there's just a way that she can approach the subject without uh, feeling the need to get graphic about it, but she still gets her point across and seems to talk pretty honestly about uh, the abuses that slaves uh, could so easily suffer. And also the ins and outs of uh, the lives of the white folk, and uh, I mean, I think she portrays the white people as people without... Uh, going into apologetics about what they're doing, which is particularly easier because uh, Sarah is against what they're doing, and uh, even occasionally uh, takes herself to task for becoming complacent in the fact that she does actually benefit from the society and from how she's using Handful. And as Handful grows up, we're seeing her get uh, angrier and more indignant about uh, her situation, especially as she's slowly able to uh, interact more with the outside world, out, uh, outside of uh, her home, and uh, with the, the slaves and the free blacks who live in uh, greater Charleston. So I uh, am not as far along in this novel as I hope to be. <laughs> uh, I've been going to work and sleeping, it seems, uh, way too much. <laughs> but uh, I hope to finish it very soon, and uh, I'll have a review up. I think it'll be a good, it's a good read. Next on the docket, I'm doing a sort of fantasy February, and I want to get through this series. This is the God Surf series. Starting with this book, this is Silent Hall, book number one by Anna Stolkart. Uh, they're from Interlibrary Loan, and <laughs> my library started uh, taping the uh, slips on a bit uh, more firmly, so <laughs> they're on to me and how I like to remove my uh, Interlibrary Loan slips. <laughs> But here's a picture of the cover from book one. It's some really pretty artwork, I think, from Angry Robot. I first heard about this series uh, through the Jewish Book Council because N.S. Dolkart's real name is uh, Noah Beit Aharon. He is a uh, nice Jewish boy, as put in his bio for uh, these uh, essays that she, he wrote for the Jewish uh, Book Councils. 
blog and uh, he is a practicing uh, Jew. You can tell really from his commentaries. He also puts in his credentials about a synagogue. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the uh, basis of the world building for his fantasy novel is uh, a literalist interpretation of uh, Jewish texts, which is not the way I believe that most Jews today uh, look at our uh, our literary history, as it were, uh, we're much more allegorical about everything. But you can't deny that this stark and vindictive world makes uh, for a engaging uh, fantasy series. Uh, there's a lot at stake. <laughs> so I'll read from the back about the uh, start of the, the series with Silent Hall. After their homeland is struck with a deadly plague, five refugees cross the continent searching for answers. Instead, they find Pisander, a wizard whose fortress is invisible to the gods and who is willing to sacrifice anything and anyone to keep the knowledge he guards hidden and safe. With Pisander as their patron, the refugees cross the mountains, brave the territory of their sworn enemies, confront a hostile ocean, and even traverse the world of the fairies in search of magic powerful enough to save themselves and Pisander's library from the wrath of the gods. All they need to do is rescue an imprisoned dragon and unleash a primordial monster upon the world. How hard can it be? And this is what uh, Beit Aharon, or Dolkarta, says about uh, the Jewish influences, or the uh, Torah influences, at least. When I began the God Surf series with my first book, Silent Hall, my plan was to set the story in a world reminiscent of the biblical one. I'd always been fascinated by the strange and horrifying world of the Tanakh, or Torah, where tricking one's brother out of his birthright is okay, but accidentally touching the Ark of the Covenant is a death sentence. And I wanted other readers to share my experience of the text in all of its disturbing glory. I know that, at least with some, I've succeeded. I have a friend who receives drashot from her favorite rabbis via email, and she keeps forwarding them to me every time a concept reminds her of my writing. If one were to go searching for biblical parallels in my series, one would find them by the Arkful, a Sinai generation made up of dragons, a leviathan-like primordial plant monster, a godly pursuit as troubling and mysterious as, as the bridegroom of blood story, plus more midrashic references than you can shake a lulav at. The gods and god serfs are mysterious and frightening, willing to wipe out a population or smite an individual over the pettiest of slights. There are also a whole lot of them, and they are frequently in conflict with each other. I chose to start the story in that polytheistic mindset because Judaism didn't arise in a vacuum. It developed in reaction to the popular local religions of its day. The characters only started moving toward a monotheistic viewpoint over the course of the first book, when they discover the existence of a God Most High, and look to that God to save them from their divine enemies. And I will link to uh, his essays down below. So yeah, color me intrigued, even though it uh, doesn't really correlate this literalist interpretation with uh, how I see religion. Uh, thank goodness uh, there's been so many centuries of uh, writing and debating and uh, fleshing out of these ideas. <laughs> but there's a definite power in these stories, particularly in worlds that can be unfair. And uh, fantasy is an interesting lens to see that through. So that about covers it for me now. Uh, I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have for uh, reading or writing, which I should be doing <laughs> too this uh, weekend because uh, it's my mom's birthday this weekend and I'm going on the faith that she doesn't watch these videos and putting it out there that I'm uh, secretly going to Baltimore uh, on Saturday tomorrow <laughs> uh, to surprise her for brunch. <laughs> And I also just got her gift in the mail today, so again, hoping she isn't seeing this, because uh, here it is. This is the uh, Barnes & no Noble exclusive edition of uh, Unsheltered by Barbara Kingsolver. It has a uh, afterword by her at the end of the book, so I'm excited. I hope she enjoys that. So yeah, I'm hoping to have a great weekend with my family, though I'm also hoping to get back here uh, in time uh, this weekend to uh, film my... Uh, nominations for the booktube sff awards uh, because uh the nominations do close on monday so i'm cutting it close to the wire <laughs> so hopefully you'll see my face back here again soon <laughs> but in the meantime thanks so much for watching everyone and i'll see you next time <laughs>